Neptunium, Neptunium, Germanium. Everybody! And Iron Americium, Ruthenium, Uranium. That is Sheldon Cooper there from the Big Bang Theory going through the periodic table of elements. Joining us to go through chemistry is Enda O'Dowd, teacher with the Institute of Education. Enda, how many questions are on this paper and how many do students have to answer? So, um, chemistry paper, there are 11 questions on and the students have to answer any eight questions of those 11. Now, it's it's important for students to know that because that's changed since COVID. So pre-COVID, there's a section A and a section B on the exam. There's three questions in section A and eight questions in section B, and that makes up the 11. Pre-COVID, they had to answer two from section A, but now that's gone. So they answer any eight questions on the paper from the 11. So sometimes when students are checking past exam papers and they still see the instructions, tell them to answer two from section A, and then they're still wondering, is that still the case? So it's not the case. Any eight questions from the 11 provided. So you have a nice variety of questions yeah. there, a nice range of options. What should students be focusing on now revising? So the big section, and they won't thank me for this, but the big section is organic chemistry. Um, organic chemistry is between 40 to 50 percent of the entire exam. So I say they won't thank me because it is a lot. Yeah. But my big advice would be to start now. Um, organic chemistry is question two. There's an organic experiment question two. It's in parts of question four. Question six is on oil refining and fuels, which is more organic chemistry. Question eight is on reactions in organic chemistry. And then usually question 10 or question 11 has another organic part. Um, the, with organic chemistry, you, you have to get the basics right. So there are eight organic families students have to be familiar with how to name those families, the different members in the families and how to draw the structures. Now, everything comes from there. If you can't, if you can't name or draw the structures of the families, you're, you're going to struggle with all organic chemistry. It, you have to start with the basics and then it all filters into the rest of the, the topics. OK, so that's probably starting off your revision then. Uh, yeah. Talk to me about reactions. Question eight is always about reactions. Is that correct? Question eight is all, always about reactions. Um, there can be some other things in there as well, but there definitely will be will be reactions. So there are eight organic reactions. Well, there's eight families and there's also eight reactions, how those families intermingle or react with each other. Um, there are there is question question eight always has um, some of those reactions, not all of them, but some of them. Uh, there is usually something called a reaction scheme shown to you where students have to they're shown reactions. They have to identify which reaction it is and maybe the reagents necessary. Um, there's also something that is quite common called a mechanism where students have to actually be able to talk through the steps of how a particular reaction works. Um, once again, it comes back to you, you will not be able to do that reactions question if you don't know the basic families in the first place. You have to know that and then it progresses to the reactions. Okay. So we know in English you have to write a lot. In chemistry yeah. it's a little bit different. You say that students need to be careful with their language. Explain that to me. Yeah, they need to be very careful. Um, you don't necessarily have to write too much but words matter in chemistry. Words really, really matter. So um, a common place students would lose marks is they would kind of answer definitions and answer questions in their own words and what they write is not necessarily wrong and they would think they've answered it correctly but if you compare what they've written to the marking scheme, the marking scheme has got key words and key language literally in bold that they have to use. So if they're writing some other word that they think is the equivalent of it, they might think it's the equivalent word, but words matter, it, it, it's not. So for example, concentration and volume are not the same word. Atom and electron are not the same word. They mean different things, but yeah. to students, not always, they think that they're just chemistry words and, and they're interchangeable, but they're very much not. So language really matters. So just like you've learned quotes in English, off by heart, you have to learn definitions in yeah, chemistry ex off by exactly. heart. Exactly. And they'll have their book or their notes to study. But what's also essential to study is the marking schemes from previous years because they, they need to use that same language okay. for their marks. How should students use their time in this exam? So it's a three hour exam um, and they have to answer eight questions. Now, I mean, eight questions is the minimum. I, my recommendation to my students is always try and answer a ninth question or even a tenth. So if they were answering nine questions, then that would you, you were to, you'd talk about an average of 20 minutes per question. Now, some questions might take them a little bit longer, but other questions, they will work back that time. Question four, for example, you could do in 10 minutes. So you'd work back the time. So you're talking about an average of 20 minutes. Um, I would also advise against trying to answer all 11 questions on the paper. Um, uh, sometimes I get where when I hear students coming out of an exam and they're delighted that, oh, I answered all 11 questions and I kind of go, oh, maybe I'm afraid you didn't put enough detail into what you're answering. So I would say eight is the minimum, nine is good and 10 is good. Uh, and, and that's what I would say. 
Are there any bankers or any predictions that you have as to what's going on up to, going to come up on the exam? Um, well, no, no bankers. And, and I would be very careful with predictions in general because okay. I've, I've seen students go into exams and their whole world falling apart <laughs> when when whatever titration they, they wanted, they expected to come up is not on the paper. You're um, so mean, but I know that you're yeah, not Yeah, but I, I have to be cautious because... Yeah. Um, but now I, 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 what you can do, you can, of course, look at previous years and you can look at the things that haven't come up in the most years. So, for example, in question one, which students will be familiar with, is a titration. There, there's 10 titrations in one appearance every year. The ones that have and come up in the longest time um, is one is the iron tablet titration that has not appeared since 2009 um, and the other one is a titration to standardise sodium thiosulfate which hasn't been up since 2015 so every other titration has been up in the meantime some twice um, but those two are the ones in the longest time that haven't come up so if you're going to my head I, I would be telling students to really really concentrate on those two and question three is always on an experiment. Uh, yes. Tell me about that. Well, que- question three is on question. So question one is a titration. Mm-hmm. Question two is an organic experiment. And then question three is a non or inorganic experiment. Um, and again, there's a, there's a list of those experiments. And again, talk going back to, to predictions. Um, the one that hasn't come up in the longest time, there is one to measure the relative molecular mass of a volatile liquid. It's actually quite a nice experiment um, for students that, that, that have studied it and are familiar with it. That again is the one that hasn't appeared in the longest time. There's also two experiments in the water chapter that have not come up in question three in a long time. So again, those those two or there's, there's three, um, again, would be the, the most likely ones. OK. Uh, uh, full disclosure here, I did chemistry for the Leaving Cert. I got a D2 in the mocks. I ended up getting an A2 in the actual exam. So yeah. if students did badly in the exam like I did, like you, you do say this is an exam where students can make progress between now and June. For sure. Students make amazing products, but, uh, progress between between the mocks and the real exam. And and, and the difference really boils down to um, be pre-mocks, before the mocks, there's not that much exam paper practice and it's a big difference. So once the mocks are done and you get your result, at least it gives you a baseline of where you're at and then past paper practice is absolutely essential, especially the last number of years. So the last five, six years, they've started to add, I mean, this chemistry course has been going on a long time since 2002. So they've kind of exhausted the material and they're trying to find different ways of asking the same material. Now, the only way to handle that and get used to it is to go to the past papers. So especially last five, six years, a lot of past paper practice and checking marking schemes to make sure you're using the right language. But they can make huge progress between mocks and, and, and the real exam. For sure. I always feel that doing past papers is a lot easier than just reading text and trying uh, yeah, to Yeah, it. exactly. So, so an, an actual physical practice of questions as opposed to reading a book. So in chemistry, a lot of things you, you need to understand visually. So there's a lot of drawing of molecules and a lot of drawing of structures to actually visually understand it. And then it makes the learning much easier. So reading from a textbook is, is not the way to go. So a lot of past paper practice and a lot of physically writing down things. OK, lastly on chemistry. Yeah. And uh, you say that when it comes to picking what questions to do, students should f- focus on their strengths. So some might be a little bit more maths orientated or some might be a little bit more just better at learning information off. Tell me about that. Yeah, exactly. So again, when it, when it comes down to picking your, your eight questions from your 11 um, again some of the students they, they, they get flustered because they don't know what questions to pick um, but exactly it comes down to that some students are very good at learning some stuff off by heart and there are questions that tailor to that so, so organic chemistry if you're good at learning stuff off by heart you'll be quite good at organic chemistry atomic chemistry is the same there's a chapter on water is the same whereas other students are more maths minded and those students should definitely be looking at questions like pH and indicators acids and bases um, stoichiometry Volumetric analysis has got lots of maths in it. So it depends on where the student's strength lie in their choice of questions. They should answer their best questions first. So they don't have to answer questions in sequence. They can start with question 11 if they want. Answer their best questions first and get those done. And then they can start looking at the questions that they're maybe not so comfortable with. Okay, great advice there from Enda O'Dowd, Institute of Education Chemistry teacher.